Hello guys, welcome to Steve Knows. This one's going to be a little bit different, a bit more casual. This one is about creating a virtual reality PC rig that will be good enough for when the Oculus Link comes out. Since they had this new announcement, I know Oculus Quest owners are wanting to get themselves a PC rig so they can make use of the Oculus Link and play some of the amazing games that are out there. So I want to show you some builds, ones that are on a budget, so around 700 or less pounds for a rig that will be good enough to play virtual reality games on. So for the sake of this video, I know that some people are not completely tech savvy, so I'm going to explain some of the main components that make up a computer in terms of virtual reality gaming. Because I want you to leave this video feeling more confident that you yourself can go out and look for a gaming rig that suits you without just blindly going in and choosing stuff that just because you hear your friend has it. I'm going to be using websites to look around such as Amazon, Overclocked and PC Specialist because if you run into problems where parts are not compatible where you've purchased them all separately and want to build them at home, you can run into all sorts of issues. I've seen people that have bought their own components and then their power supply. It's not enough to run the computer, so it's just rendered it useless. So if you buy at uh, places such as this, then you know that the computer is going to be tested. They're also going to recommend parts that are only compatible with your build. The one I'm going to recommend, they're not sponsoring me, it's just something I've used, is PC Specialist. You probably have your own version of this. It's a website where you can select your components and build your own computer. I do recommend them because they recommend compatible options for your build so you're not just putting anything together they also test the rig before they send it out to you which is obviously the last thing you want is it for it to break when it arrives you want to start gaming and then nothing works because of your own naivety this place also does finance where you can put a one percent deposit down if you're a parent here looking for something for your child for christmas and then you can pay it off over four years or over the first year interest free so I want to first talk about the main components that people look at when buying a computer, which is the GPU, the CPU, and RAM. When in fact, when you're building a computer, you need to look at things such as CPU, RAM, the GPU, power supply, motherboard, a cooling system, a network adapter, um, the casing, a hard drive, do you want an SSD? There's a myriad of options that go into it. It's not just these components, and people seem to forget that. So let's talk about the CPU. The CPU stands for Core Processing Unit. This bad boy is what will run your programs and calculations on the computer. The more apps running, the more load there's going to be on the CPU. The operations of the CPU are fetch, decode, and execute. So it fetches the data out of memory, which loads into our RAM, which we usually take from the HDD. It takes this information and puts it into an instruction register, which is a bit like a queue of instructions. It decodes this and executes them at crazy, crazy fast speeds. When you see a CPU that it has core, it's like a bunch of mini CPUs put into one. You then have threads which enable the ability for parallel processing, multiple tasks running at once on a single core. Um, so when you see quad core four threads, that's four times four. That's 16 computations at any given time if it's used perfectly. So what does this mean in terms of virtual reality? When is the CPU used when VR gaming? This is used for things such as the AI in games or non-playable characters. So in faster paced games, the CPU is a more of a vital component than say if you're playing a puzzle game such as Pavlov, theoretically will be more CPU demanding than Shadow Point. But this is all obviously up for the developer as there's an example of Minecraft running on a single core. So here the CPU is really important. So the GPU, which is the graphical processing unit, is designed for geometrical or mathematical equations, very complex uh, calculations when you're rendering graphics with great physics. These things get so hot, so you do need a cooling system. Don't go buy a computer if it doesn't have a cooling system. Especially if you're playing virtual reality for hours on end, this thing is going to get hot. And the last thing you want to do is melt your motherboard. I do recommend buying a GPU from established brands, because they have ways of improving the graphical processing, so you'll have better anti-aliasing and filtering on your visuals, so it'll look crisper. And in virtual reality, the GPU is even more important, because you're running two screens effectively, and at an even higher refresh rate. Next one is RAM. This is random access memory. In VR gaming these days, I don't feel that RAM is much of a problem as it used to be. Because people are getting 64 gig, 32 gig, 16 gig, um, and that's more, th more than enough. So in this video when we go over looking at the minimum specs or the recommended specs, the RAM isn't going to be that high. So you need to close applications down when you're starting to run a VR game. So what happens in RAM is that when we load up a game, it's going to load that game into memory for us to start running our computations on it and for us to start playing the thing. But with VR games, they're not actually that big at the moment, so you're not loading that much information. 
So if you want to use a computer for more than just VR gaming, definitely, definitely get more RAM because you'll start feeling the effects of if you held back. So let's start looking at the requirements. We've got an Oculus Quest, the Oculus Link is coming out. So what does the Oculus Quest need from our computer? What does it need to provide? It's running at 72 hertz, it's locked at that, but they did say it could do 90 if they get FCC approval, so perhaps you want to future-proof that, um, so it's something to think about. The Quest is also running at a high resolution, which is 2880 and 1600, which is a lot higher than our 1080p screens. We also need a USB-C and 3.0 connection on the computer in order to use the Oculus Link. So we've got our requirements, we kind of know what we're looking for now, so let's go see what's out there that we can get at a great price. Right, so this is the Oculus page showing us the minimum and the recommended specifications on the Rift S. So this is kind of what we're going to be looking for. I do not recommend going minimum because you're not future-proofing yourself that way. You'll get this system and as VR grows, you're going to be behind again. You're going to have to reinvest in another machine. So definitely look at the recommended because as it, time goes on, this will probably become the minimum. So Oculus recommend an Intel i5 and a Ryzen 5 1500 or greater. A graphics card, they want a GTX 1060, which isn't, it's not that much. So the alternative graphics card, if you don't have a 1060, is the GTX 970, and 8 gigs of RAM, and of course that USB 3.0 is what we're looking for. Okay, so I'm going to go take you through some computers that I found on some of these websites, and hopefully there's something there that's within your price range, and also show you that you can get a virtual reality gaming PC without having to spend £2,000 for the best of the best specs. Seeing this as the recommended specs is actually quite a good thing. Now that we've got the 20 series out, a lot of these components are actually going to be a little bit cheaper because now the newest, the greatest, and latest is out, such as there's a new um, Intel chip, there's a new Ryzen chip, and also we have the NVIDIA RTX series. So checking out the first one I got together is £716 or 23 a month if you're a parent looking for your child. So we have the Ryzen 3600 which is 3.6 hertz to 4.2 hertz with 6 cores. That is more than enough since they were recommending the uh, 1500 um, Ryzen. A motherboard with 3.1 which is perfect. It's even better than the 3.0. Um, 8 gigabytes of RAM. Um, a lot of recommendations say 4, I don't believe in 4, don't do 4, do 8, and also 8 gigabytes of storage on the GPU with an RX 580, which is the recommended on the Oculus Quest recommendation list. This one comes with a 240 gig SSD instead of a HDD because it is actually a bit cheaper than going for the 500 gigabyte hard drive, but after getting an SSD, I can't go back, so I definitely recommend getting one. Everything loads super fast, everything reads absolutely fantastic, and this is probably going to help when your RAM needs to access and load stuff into random access memory for your CPU, it's going to be a lot faster retrieving that, so you might there might be some marginal differences. See, so that's the one at 716, but some of these, they do actually go cheaper, So, but the next one, I'm going to look at the Intel chip, if some of you might not be into the uh, AMD lot. So we've got the i5, as recommended, the 9400, not the 48 series. Uh, we've also got the 3.1 USB as expected. 8 gigabytes of RAM again, don't go 4. And again, this has got the Radeon uh, RX 580, which is the minimum specs again, which for 691, which is a bit cheaper. But we can change this to the 1060, which bumps it up a bit in price. Okay, so let's take a look at the overclock lot now here. This one's a bit cheaper. We still have a CPU that's within our specifications, a 1660 though, instead of a 1060. Also, we have 16 gigabytes of RAM here. We still have the SSD and a terabyte of additional storage. So that's even better. It's a lot cheaper and it's even better in terms of there's more storage and there's more RAM. But on Amazon, there were even more great deals. So let's look at this one. So we have an i5 4.1. Um, six cores with a 1660 again, eight gigabytes, which is perfect. But this time, with, instead of an SSD, we have a terabyte hard drive. But this is only 640. So let's look at another one I found. This one is a Ryzen 5 2400, which is within our spec still with a 580, but with eight gig instead of the six that we get on the 1660. Eight gigabytes of RAM again. Um, this time it does have a Wi-Fi adapter in it. The others didn't. So you would be looking at plugging that straight into an Ethernet connection. So look out for that. Okay, so the next one, we have a 2600X 6-core, amazing. I like AMD for the fact the CPU, you get more bang for your buck, but they tend not to be as resilient as the Intel chips, but um, I've not had any issues myself. This one comes with a 2060, so you can have some ray tracing with 16 gigabytes of RAM, 
half a terabyte SSD and it also has Wi-Fi for only 800. So this, that marginal, additional about 100 pound, additional 140 pound, if you're looking at the specialist, just for an additional 60 pound, you're gonna get a new RTX GPU, even more RAM and even more on the SSD. This is an absolute bargain. And the final one I found was an i5 again, um, with a 1660, eight gigabytes, but with a rather fancy looking case for only 650. These are really cheap VR gaming PCs. They're obviously not going to be the best of the best, but from they're even more than what the recommended are from Oculus. So if this is within your budget, if this is perhaps just a little bit over, I think it's probably worth the investment. So that's it from me. Hopefully you know a bit more about what you're going to be looking for when looking at a VR gaming PC, about how some of the internals work and kind of the price range that you're looking at. We've gone over the main components and what they do. We've got the specifications of the Quest and what's required there, the recommended from Oculus. And we've looked at that, gone on and above that and found some really great deals. If you have any questions, please comment down below. I'll be happy to answer them or join the Discord and we can discuss in the community. So that's it from me. Thanks for watching. Steve knows. Happy gaming, guys. <laughs> Good day.